So, welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Bernd Kudige, and you're here. I'm not from the UK. I'm coming from Germany, so <laughs> hope that is fine for you. And you see my title here. It's, uh, I, my title is H I calls HR Solution Coaching at Bosch Engineering. So it's a 100% subsidiary from Bosch. And uh, the reason why I'm here is I, I visited last year in the Flight Levels Academy a so-called flight level coach training or sessions. And then they offer some new things. And I said, I have also a new thing I can show to all of you in, the, in, that, in that class. And uh, this year, Jose uh, contacted me and said, Bernd, we do a Lean HR live 3D now in London. And I said, perfect. And he would like that I share my insights to you. So I explain a little bit, how does it work? I would like also to demystify that flight levels talk. Uh, it's a thinking model. Yeah. And uh, I show you also some examples from Robert Bosch that you can really see small projects, bigger projects that you can imagine. How does it work? So first of all, I would like to introduce my company a little bit. We are Bosch Engineering. We are a small 100% subsidiary from Bosch. And we use all that products from Bosch to make uh, customized mobility solutions like trains for for, uh, for braking system, trucks, for navigation, agriculture, for digitalization. We do uh, also electrifying cars, connected. The IoT thing and the cloud thing is already starting. And that beautiful niche cars like Ferrari, Benetton's, Rolls Royce, because we are small enough to do that, that part. If you see here facts and figures, Bosch overall is 400,000 people. We are only 3,000 3, people, but we have eight countries, 14 locations. We are 100% Bosch. We are not so old like the, the main company. We are 23 years old. We have 3,000 associates. If you have the money, we do the prototype for you in the batch size of one. Yeah. And zero cylinder means we do also electrification. We have motorsport inside, and we do typically 800 customer projects a year plus, depending how successful we are. Uh, so that you can see, this is the service area of Bosch Engineering, and I'm middle here in the consulting area. We have 100 people consulting different topics, different services, and the HR solution coaching team is about 15, 16 persons. We are growing, but it's not so easy to get the right people on board. Uh, and you see here a lot of things. And in the meantime, we don't only support BEG, we support also Bosch project. So we have luck in consulting and keep our uh, knowledge also to that company. If we talk about flight levels, it seems it's a very easy, lightweight thinking model. And we, we think organizations in the way that we start here in the flight level one operation level. This is typically the teams doing the work. Yeah, it could be Scrum, could be Kanban, could be also in our case safe or classical project management. It's possible yeah, in our world. And then we unfortunately have dependencies. Yeah? Dependencies on resources, dependencies on teams, dependencies on knowledge if you do new things and you have to manage it. And that is the area that we said we need flight level two. We need an end-to-end -end coordination level. Yeah? Uh, so uh, we have coordinate dependencies, coordinate product and services. And you see here also between, there is also something we coordinate that flows uh, that we need to do the beautiful work for our customer to deliver. We need also sometimes to coordinate two flows. It could be operational project management, product management. It could be solution families, product families, all that stuff. You have to link it depending on the business, what you do. And then what I like in that model, we have very often a missing link to strategy. And this is level three. So what is the missing link to strategy? And this poster seems very hierarchical, but it's not. It's more manage the flow, not manage the people in that way. Yeah? It's really important to know. And uh, I use that model for my customers to structure the things in that way and ask stupid questions as a consultant all, all, every time. And the basic question here is how to bring that simple poster to life for my organization? Yeah? How, how does it uh, work? And I would like to give you in 10 slides all my insights that I, have, I know so far. 
<laughs> so, if I start uh, the flight levels of our customer workshops, then we have very often that question. I would like to have my coordination boards. I don't care about all that words that you're seeing here around flight levels, five activities, safe, Kanban. So then can you tell me how, how we can get this very quick? Yeah, because uh, we have a problem, we have the solution, the boards, and the way between is important, that we have the right boards, the right people at the right point of time. And so this is very often uh, the question. And at the beginning, we, we have no idea how can this work. And then in one workshop for three years ago, I have an idea how could it work, and I show you step by step what you can do. The starting point is always, if we talk about dependencies, we have to understand the keyboard problem. If you develop one product with one team, you have no problems in scaling. What happens if you have, let me say, 5, 10, 20 products and services, 20 teams, and they're contributing together to get that value for the customer? You have to solve the keyboard problem because the goal is, the goal is here to write an error-free letter. It could be also a laugh letter. yeah. And then the, the, the key is here, if you look to team number two, you can train them to, to type as fast as possible the keyboard areas, the keyboard line. But it didn't help you because you, you have to manage the interactions. That means the right team at the right time with the right word to write. Yeah, this is here the keyboard problem. And very often, if we start with that, we can talk about dependencies, team dependencies, resource dependencies, knowledge dependencies. So we do analyze that. And then the basic question is, how many keyboards do you have in your organization? Or how many keyboards do we need for our organization that we can do that work? I can do 100, so I miss nothing. But is it also possible to do it with five keyboards, 10 keyboards, the same work in a smart way? So that is, the, that is the key question. So to so really think lean. And we do it in that way. We said, OK, in our setting, we have to wire the keyboards that we analyze to a so-called work system topology. Yeah? And this is, the, for our clients, the, the thing that is really, really the challenging part for them. Because we can tell them as a as consultant, as a solution coach, how to do. They have to tell us the business. And then we say, OK, is this coordination board a portfolio management? Is this coordination board a solution family? What is it? And how are they wired to that keyboards for the teams? And we, if we have that perspective clarified, then we said, perfect. If this is your working system topology, we can simulate. You don't have to start immediately. We can simulate and validate. And this is the the part who gives our organization, if we talk about 200 people, 500 people involved in that system, gives safety and security, we really understand the work, what we do, and how we contribute to the value creation here to write all that letters. This is important part. Now the magic is here. This is an example from building technology, yeah? a real example. This is 180 persons. Uh, not so complicated work system topology, but uh, I think e good to learn. You see here we have the business uh, strategy, and then the top you have flight level three. Then the three uh, in the middle are coordination boards. One is to coordinate the product and services because this is the former part of the company. This is the new part of the company, and you can bring not together that IT solutions. So typically problem, and you have here below. Fixed teams, they are rely to that uh, keyboards. And we have here cross teams. We link it to the product management board because these are the resources sometimes you need or the people or the competence you need in the product board left side or on the product board right side. And we avoid with that linking that here these two co coordination boards fight against each other to get the people's head. Yeah, so we, we control it on the level. These people work here for compliance reasons or data, but we avoid that fight. Yeah? Who of you have this, this big Excel sheet about resources? Yeah? We try to avoid that. So that is, that is the key here. And this is the magic that we can say, if we have that working system topology, 
we can simulate. We can simulate work. How we do this? This is the topology. This is the template we use, and we use the phrase flatten the work system. That means we have here one part here, uh, strategy we can't flatten. We have here coordination board, we have one we can't flatten. But we have two keyboards for the simulation. We can flatten to one line. And we flatten also the teams. If you would like to distinguish between component teams and feature teams, we have a second line. So that is how it works. Easy? If you have that, then the magic starts. This is the template. Then we ask the people, what is the typical trigger of work? What triggers work in your system? Is this a feature? Is it an initiative? Is it epics? What is it? And on which level typically this trigger of work starts? Could be on strategy, could be on team level. What is it? And the magic here is, if you do it together with the customer, it's the first point of time that they talk about complete work in, this, in, the, in the organization. It's not only saying, I doing a part of software, I doing a part of testing. We talk exactly how, how uh, is work going through the system. And we can see in the patterns here, uh, is it a smart way? Is it a good way? Uh, according decision speed, according delivery speed. And the most important part in that point of, of doing that flight route and flight item simulation is to really take care about this is the part of generate. So we do things on that level. We form a feature to an epic or we form epics here to user stories or technical stories. It's really clear when we're doing a transformation of work. And this is generate. And then we have here downstream. This is downstream. And here we have upstream parts. So collecting results from team to bring it together if we deliver an epic or a feature. This is really important for, for, for my way uh, how we can do from that uh, picture from that simulations a so-called uh, quick design board. And in that situation, for three years ago, I said to my customer, I can see the flow of dead boards. Can you also see it? If I show you the solution, you said it's, it's obvious, it's easy, it's no rocket science. It's, it's uh, also a thing that uh, I learned a lot from Klaus Leopold, but he didn't also see that chance to make it very simple. This, these parts here are important. And this is the situation. Our, our customer said, hey, beautiful simulation. But, but Bernd, I would like to have that coordination board for that keyboard or for that one. Yeah? So can you show me? And at the beginning, we can't. And then we think about, and then we come to that solution. We said, OK, we need a kind of Kanban board design fairy dust. Yeah? So we make magic in the room, said, OK, take a coffee. And after 15 minutes, the board is available in the workshop. We do it that way. This is the, uh, the, the situation. We have the simulation. Then we ask the people about the generation. How many steps do you think we have to do between? Is it one step? Is it two steps? And please describe the activity. Yeah? If we have that, uh, that information, we have a kind of flow. We put it out, start our really uh, strong developed fairy dust Kanban board design kit. It's that one. And then we create in 15 minutes that boards. It's not perfect, but it's a good starting point to validate what we talk about in the simulation. Yeah? And this is so powerful. And then the people can contribute. And what is also happening over time, at the beginning, these this are very long, 10, 15 steps. Yeah? And then we, they discuss. And then I said, take a use case from the previous project you have and check it. Take a use case from the upcoming project and check it. And very often, we come from 15 stages to eight, seven, so we can streamline. So this is here. Uh, the key. Simple. <laughs> yeah? And it's, it's no rocket science. You need the brain of the people who said, what is work doing? 
then ask them what are the steps you have in mind to generate this, and then create that board. Pull into the coffee, 15 minutes later, you get it. So then most of the people, especially at Bosch, they are, don't trust. Do you have really examples? Do you have real examples? This is building technology in Eindhoven. They're doing solutions for video systems, like building airports, railway station, uh, and all that stuff. And this is the solution board. And they, they have the same question. Hey, we have seen like this, but we can't see the flow. Then we say, OK, do this. We transfer it here. And then uh, we send them to copy, and after, if they, after the co copy is, uh, uh, break is over, the coffee break, then we make that board. You see it's, it's really long, but it's a good starting, starting point to discuss. And with that simple, very, very simple, you can do it in, in Miro board, uh, you can work with the Miro board, and you have it very quick, very visible. And this is exactly what the people need, because after the workshop, you can, can go with that result to people who should use that and get, that, get their feedback to make it better. Yeah, that is so simple. You would like to have an advanced one? This is the advanced one. This is a, a we have at, at Bosch a, a central IT uh, department doing all that good stuff that we can work remote. And we, it's not so easy to flatten the, the the template, but it's possible. I make it additionally small because it not, doesn't make sense to really understand what is in, in that flight route simulation. And then they have the question, how is this board looks like? How is this board looks like? And by the way, this team is also important that we should understand. Yeah? So OK, we make a longer coffee break. We need 45 minutes because our three boards. Then we have that board, and they do the analysis. We have here also very often the pain points waiting for teams, waiting for experts, waiting for architecture, waiting for everything. Sometimes if we collect uh, things upstream, we need a buffer to collect the epics or the deliveries so that we can make a release. But anyway, and then we check if we have that board, does our flight route simulation really work? Do we have the connected feedback loops? Do, can we really release software? Can we? bring features to that system. So you see all that parts. The, the good thing is we do this all before we start a pilot. So we are really, really sure there is a high possibility that this will work. Yeah? And then uh, you see this is about the organization. I think 800 people inside CI. And I also put here the contact person who do this uh, analysis here, that if you would like to contact him, you can really double check. It's a real example. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, because I, I don't like fakes. I, I really would like to show in that, uh, that audio here a real example that you can imagine. And this is no rocket science. It's a little bit you need help from flight coach. You need uh, a good team that can imagine, can do that simulations here. But anyway, uh, it's easy. So my summary is, if you start with that flight levels, understand your keyboard coordination system. Yeah? Use that word keyboard. It's very visible for the people. In the good old days, we played this with the managers. Three keyboards, one USB stick, and then write a letter. So it's OK. I think it's mine. And. Wire the keyboards to work system topology. And you can use also, let me say, it doesn't make sense to have only one solution. It, it's better you have two or three alternative solutions and, and check with one or two simulations what, what works best. Then you need to simulate the work to validate upstream and downstream, because if you have that pattern, up and down, up and down, then I asked as a coach, how is your decision making process at the moment? Not so fast. Sometimes they, they would like to have a speed to develop features in four weeks. But if we have that pattern, it's not possible. Yeah? So you, need, you, you have to create a coordination board very quick so that the customers, the, the users, can really validate on, on, on use cases they know or upcoming use cases how it works. And don't over-simulate. 
use that as a starting point and make up, start operating and improve and learn about if you really understand how is work going. Well, that is the very simple thing. Questions? Um, yeah? I'm not entirely clear on what the keyboard coordination problem is. Is that you know, assign a key for each member of the team? Or? No, it's, it's more you have, you have three teams. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, your team one has to start something and team two take it. This is more or less a work package responsibility. Sometimes you have more than uh, one or two teams. They should do things together. And uh, where we're at the beginning of a coordination board, it's really important that you, to, you come to a conclusion, does it make sense to start exactly that work? Or should we start another work? Because one of the teams is, is overloaded with work. It doesn't make sense to start that work. Yeah? Yeah? Can I follow on from that? Um, so, can I answer your related questions? Can you say a bit more about the actual, what actually happens at the board um, in terms of, you know, uh, Review meetings, stand-up meetings, yeah. Yeah. and also, um, at what level can you control working progress, or how exactly do you control working progress on that level? Okay, I, I take that. I take. No, I take that example. The board itself—it's only the board that we can visualize work, that you can understand our situation. And here we have typically a buffer. We have some meetings like planning meetings, stand-up meetings, uh, retrospectives like that you already know. And then typically, yeah, this is this is. A, let me say some representative of the team to have solved the keyboard problem. It could be product owner, could be also from the product management someone who introduced that feature would like to have that feature. Yeah, and then we 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 visualize that situation. How is work at the moment? Do we have bloggers? Why is this card the last six weeks here and waiting for position? What happens on team level? So asking all that question. So the board itself, it's only a tool to understand how is work flowing through our system. Yeah? Important are the people staying in front of the board and asking that smart questions. Is it answering your question? Yes. Is this like every day or something? It depends how dynamic is your market. We have power tools, they have uh, two re main releases per year. We have thermal technology, they have one release in two years. If we have new heating systems. So it depends because uh, you have to think about what is, what is the link here for, to strategy and what is my environment's dynamic. Yeah? And if we go to digitalization, it's completely different if we think about in thermal technology systems or in building technologies. Yeah? But you have to think about what is the connecting part. And if, you, if the trends and the strategy changes more often, you need a higher frequency on the strategy level. And then typically, you need also higher frequency on coordination level. But the key is to keep that meetings as short as possible, because it's a conversation. It's not a meeting itself. It's more in the way, hey, team, we finished that part here. So you can, uh, start, you can prepare your testing next week. So it's more a conversation to make it proactive. It's not in that way to say, here's the stand up, we are finished, you can start tomorrow. This is wrong. It's more a conversation. Yeah? Proactively, so that you can really coordinate the work. Yeah? And don't, don't overload the system. You can do time boxing, you can do work in progress, all what you need. Yeah? <laughs> How do you bring this from Miro then into your, I mean, you're not working with Miro every day, yeah, yeah. so where do you bring it in in Bosch? Typically, the tool at the moment is Jira, yeah, and uh, you need a, a smart person who can do a state machine for all that steps here, but we have example, it's building technology that is maybe a one week work because it's not only the flow here, you need also concept who has access rights to that boards and all that stuff. It's, and then what we learn at the moment is how to use it in Azure. DevOps, DevOps Azure, but I have no idea at the moment. How and does it work? All the rights to form the like that. So to yeah, let me say way. we have very limited uh, at the moment uh, if we use the old version of Chira. I hope we get a better uh, uh, contribution if we can switch to the Bosch development cloud okay. in Chira. Yeah. 
of settlement life from a different level of what people say. I think people that work on strategy will have other benefits, yeah. trade-offs than coordination operational. So now that you're using it, what are people thinking at and reality about it? Uh, at the beginning, it, it's really hard because you, you see knowledge workflow, yeah, and this is this is a, this requires also a kind of culture of collaboration. It's you you can't hide problems, so you you see problems very early. If you if you are here at that stage and say, oh, this team is working very long on that, that that beautiful concept we need for that next feature, so it's very visible. And the culture you should introduce a culture of trust, not of fear. And uh, especially not a culture of blaming the people here, because there is a reason why they can't deliver. They have to do some other things. But this, we, we, the, 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 the problem is here, this is we use to make knowledge work visible. And you can't see in the engineer's brain how it's work flowing. You, you can only see if you coordinate that work. It sounds like you have multiple flight level systems. Yeah. Are there dependencies between those systems? Do you have to coordinate a coordination yeah. of coordination systems? Yeah. Uh, I have at the moment a huge cross functional company, and before we start with that work system topology, we do a so called DSM uh, uh, analysis which team, which topic is linked to which other team. And then you get an Excel sheet with hotspots, and then say, okay, what is a cool way? To, to work with that hotspots that we identify the most important dependencies and we bring it more or less step, step by step. If I show you that, that work system topology, this, this here is the most simple one. If you see it from that cross-functional uh, division, it's about 800 people. It's much more complicated. You have system architecture, you have software. You have uh, hardware development, you have mechanical development, and you, how to bring that value streams together that you have at the end a product, it's called vehicle computer for our customers. Yeah? And you see here, we have different types. You'd have types of coordination teams, and you have types of coordination product services or solution. Yeah, and this is the talk, you need a customer's brain, you can't do it. It's not possible as a flight level coach to really make that picture say, do it that way. And this is the reason why I like that approach about flight levels as a thinking model, because this is a pure HR solution coaching. We ha don't have fixed slides for your problems. We work together and do that work system topology. And then we can simulate if you really understand how you work. And then we make the boards. And I think this is pure HR solution coaching. Yeah? It's always fun and challenging, yes. But you learn so much. Yeah. Can I just add to that question? Like, if you don't have that um, possibility to measure as you do, yeah. how would you possibly do it? Measure? Well, with the dependencies. You said you would yeah. look really into that, uh, the dependencies, and then, you know, yeah. like, not everyone has the possibility to do that in that way. Yeah, but it's, if you have a larger system, it's really, you, you shouldn't start with, without knowing your de main dependencies on, on your business. Yeah, that is my, my recommendation. And sometimes it's very special to get that information, and uh, I think this is another 20, 30 minutes talk about dependencies. So, hope you like it. More questions? Yeah. <laughs>